Hey, Aaron here. I'm the host of Table Talk, and what you're about to watch is a summary of our weekly stream. So this takes that hour-long stream, boils it down to its essentials, so you can quickly get the information you need. Without further ado, here's the stream summary. How can I collaborate with my team in Airtable? What you need to know is when you create a base, you can invite people to that base. How you do that is by clicking the share button at the top right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So base means I wanna invite this person into my base, into where our team works. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Sohil, one of our team members as an example, and then I can give them a level of permission. This will tell Sohil what they have access to. And very kind of overlooked feature here, you can add a message. I highly recommend because just getting an email to say, hey, you're invited to Airtable without any context can be jarring. It might have that person not actually go in and explore it. So I'm just gonna write this quick message. I could send that invite. And now you'll see here that Sohil is a base collaborator. Now what's important to know in Airtable, when you invite someone into your base, they get access to all the information in your base and the ability they have to edit information or create things is dependent on their permission level. What can I actually do with this once I've invited Sohil? Well, one thing I can do is assign campaigns or records, depending on your example. You can also tag people in comments. So that is just the kind of basic mechanics of inviting people to Airtable. So in Airtable, when you invite someone, you have to give them a level of permission. Do recommend adding a message to let them know what you're inviting them to. And once you've invited them, they are then available in every collaborator field and can be tagged in comments where you can chat about what it is you're working on. What options do I have for controlling permission levels in Airtable? When I invite someone, I have an option of four different levels of permission, and this will dictate how many things they can do in Airtable. So first is the creator level. So at the base level, I can create tables, I can create records, I can create views, I can change automations, I can add them, delete apps. So really as a creator, you have full control, you are the builder of the base, and you are the decider of what happens in it. Now the level under that, or the level with less permission, is editor. So let's actually go here into this same base, but from the point of view of an editor. So the first thing you'll notice is that you can create records, you can edit records. So what that means is I can change the status of a campaign, I can update dates, I can change information. However, I don't have that control around changing the base. So what I mean by that is I can't change any field. I also can't add fields. So as an editor, I don't have control over the structure of the base. One thing is that you can create new views, but I cannot unlock other views. Locking means that editors and anyone below creator cannot unlock the view to change its configuration. And one thing, as an editor, you can view existing automations and apps but you cannot add new ones. So an editor's role is really updating information, but not deciding the structure of the base, not deciding the apps that go on top or the automations that run within that base. So we've talked about creator, we've talked about editor. The third is a commenter. So these are folks who both need visibility into the information in the base, but do not need to edit information, but can comment. So in this case, you can see I can't edit any of the information. I can see it. I can see all the information in the base. I can comment and say, Sohil, Taylor, what is the status here? So that is the limit of what I can do. I can comment on records. I can see the information, but I cannot edit any of it. And obviously I can't add apps, dashboards, and things like that. And the final one and the lowest and least permission is the read only. So this means that you can view all of the information in the base. You cannot edit or update any of the information. And if we expand a record, you cannot 
comment. Now, the thing to know about read only is that if you're on the pro plan, read only are not built. Okay, so we've gone through creator, editor, commenter, and read only. Now, the last thing I want to say here is that these are rigid. And so what I mean by that is you've noticed that there are these, as an editor, you can edit all tables and all fields. However, you can limit that. So what I mean by that is you can have table and field level permissions. So how you do that is in this little arrow, say edit table permissions. And there are two options here. I can say creators and up. This meaning that everyone who has creator status or level of permissions can edit the information, but I can say specific users and same logic for who can delete records. So maybe you want to allow people to delete records, but not create them. You can do that in the table permissions. Now, last thing here is that maybe you want to have that same logic at the field level. So maybe I want to edit the field permissions of status to only say, well, who can edit these values? Maybe it's only creators and up, maybe it's specific users. So that's just an example of field permissions at the table and field level. So editor and up can edit information, creator and up can create the structure of the base and commenter can comment and read only can see information. If that structure is too rigid or isn't exactly what you want, you can update at the table and field level permissions. What about collaborators who don't need access to my whole base. This happens often. So maybe it's an external team, right? That needs update on the latest products, but you don't necessarily want to give them access to all of the information in your base. It could be folks who just need to give you information, right? So you have this ability to decide who are internal users who need access to the whole base and who should either have access to part of the base or putting information into the base. So the first example I want to talk about is what if you want to give people access to a part of your base? Let's say I want to give folks access to all campaigns that we've run. So here in the view configuration, I have the option to share the view. So when I share this, this creates a URL that anyone can visit and that they can see the information. So a few configurations that are important here. One example is showing all fields in expanded records. That means that when they would click on the record, they would ac get access to all the fields, not only to the ones that I've shown on the card. You can set a password or restrict access to specific email domains. So what's important here is that anyone accessing this URL has access to the information in this specific view and any updates. So anytime you update information in your base, any new visitors to that shared view URL will be able to see your information. Very important to remember that you have to refresh it, right? And this is one way of sharing information. Any type of view in Airtable can be shared externally, can have a URL assigned to it that folks can visit. And last thing here is if you click this, it gives you the code that you copy paste into your website that you can embed. And this is really useful if you're maybe embedding a calendar for an event or a talk and or you're managing your information in Airtable. You can go ahead and include an embedded view of that information onto your website very easily. Okay. So that was the first part. However, that's not the only thing you want people to do. Often you want people to input information and not necessarily have access to the rest of your information. So to do that in Airtable, you use a form view. I've already done that here and then pick which fields they should fill out. And here creates a URL, same options here. I can restrict with an email or a password and it creates this form that folks can fill out. That is in Airtable, how you collaborate, how you share a part of your base and then with Airtable forms, how do you get people to submit information into your base without having access to the rest of the information? How can I help my team get the most out of my base and make sure we're working together effectively? I think what's most important is giving people context, as much information as possible so they understand the Airtable base, but also the role that they have to play in that Airtable base. So what I want to show you a little bit is how do you provide that context? So the first one I want to talk to you about is the base description. So right here, 
When you're new to a base, this automatically pops up. So the first time you come to a base, you'll see this base guide. What I particularly like to give folks is a high level explainer of every table and who interacts with each table. I also include dashboards. Another pro tip here is you can also link to things in that description. So that was the first one. The second is maybe you wanna give an onboarding dashboard to folks so that they understand what this Airtable base does. You can go into apps and I have a description app where you can include anything to give folks, again, context into the base that they're working out of. So those are just two ways to provide kind of high level text. What I would also recommend is within the base itself, giving as much context to people as possible. So let's go ahead and say, well, in every table and every field and every view, you can add a description. So here in the campaign table, when you hover over it, I explain what the campaign table is for. You can add view descriptions. You can also do that at the field level. So if you go to all campaigns, I've explained here the status field, what each select option means. When you start working in large bases with a lot of people, extremely important to always provide context into what it is they should be looking at and what it is they are looking at so they understand their role and making sure that everyone has the right permissions. The last tip I wanna give you is using not only text, but emojis. So having emojis to bring people's attention, also to have a emoji dictionary for your team. So for instance, here I have a little lightning bolt to say that an automation is tied to this field. Maybe for you, it's a siren, something like that. So just summarizing those tips, first base description, Second, creating a welcome dashboard with all of the information that someone would need to orient themselves in the base. And third, making sure you're providing context within the base itself, using base descriptions, field descriptions, views description, having emojis, and really bringing people's attention to what they should be doing and what can be done in your Airtable base. That was the stream summary. If you want to watch that whole stream and really dig into the details, you can click here. And I hope to see you at the next Table Talk, which happens every week, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. I'll see you there.